Yo, 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 what is good, everybody? It's your host, Real Good underscore Dodie. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. But today I got my co host with me Chico Grande, aka the real shooter McGaff. <laughs> and shooter. And today we got another TFTC Sports Week 7 uh, Stats Leaders. And in this video today, we're going to be going over all the uh, passing yards, receiving yards, and rushing yards as well um, for each player in the position. I'm sorry, I'm vibing out to the beat. Me too. But we're going to break it down. We're going to go through all the stats. We're going to give you the week seven leaders, who showed up, who didn't. We're going to get in the stats, and we're going to have some 80 tunes, 80s tunes in the background. So you need to check the link in the description for all of our channels. We do uh, Tales from the Crib every Monday, 9 a.m., TFTC Clips, TFTC Gaming. It will all be in the description, but let's go ahead and uh, get this uh, show started. How to put that off. And we're going to get the 80s, 80s vibes starting. And are you ready for the stats, Seth? I'm ready. All right. So first quarterback that I'm going to be going over today is number one, Joe Burrow, quarterback out of the, from the Cincinnati Bengals. He was 34 for 42 for a total of 481 yards, throwing a total of three touchdowns. Cincinnati was able to get the victory over the Atlanta Falcons, 35-17. to 17. Now, Joe Burrow was, this is actually his second season, and uh, coming out of the uh, LSU, and Joe Burrow is finally getting He's finally it together. putting it together. Mm -hmm. And I understand, that, you know, they kind of had a little bit of a Super Bowl hangover because it was a game that they were, you know, should have won. But You, you know, you know I got I to gotta talk some trash real quick on Joe Burrow because, you know, I was like, this guy's amazing. He's taking his team to the Super Bowl. And then he comes out and the Steelers beat him week one. I'm like, the Steelers are going to be good this year because I thought the Steelers were going to be trash, but I still have faith in my team. The Steelers beat him. And I was like, oh, the Steelers are going to be good. And they ain't been good since. But back to what I was saying, yeah, the Cincinnati Bengals look like they're finally getting it together. Um, I mean, they got three arguably thousand yard receivers, Tyler Boyd, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, now I understand that uh, Jamar Chase will be out four to six weeks with the hip strain. Terrible. Um, but I still think the Cincinnati Bengals are going to put in the work. Um, I saw someone on Fantasy playing, and they said, uh, they, I think they were dropping Chase from their Fantasy team. No way. And, and they had a, a crying emoji. <laughs> you know, I got, I got T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd in the Fantasy League. So I'm pretty excited. But yeah, Joe Burrow, man, Cool Joe did his thing. Next, I want to talk about Patrick Mahomes. That was 25 for 35 for a total of 423 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception. They ended up getting the victory 44 to 23 against the San Francisco 49ers. Now, Patrick Mahomes is, this is a little interesting because Patrick Mahomes, to me, is the second best quarterback in the NFL. Who, but, do, you, who do you have as number one? Oh, Josh Allen. Josh Allen. Okay, that's a, it's a, it's a solid pick. But back to what I was saying, yeah, I understand that Patrick Mahomes, you know, he doesn't have a Tyreek Hill receiver anymore, but they're still getting it done. I mean, he still has Travis Kelsey, the best tight end in the NFL. True. But the thing that scares me the most about, well, concerns me about Patrick Mahomes is I feel like when it comes to the game, like I understand, yeah, they won in uh, 2020. Well, 20, yeah, yeah, well, a couple you know years I mean? back. In 2019, 2020, they won the Super Bowl against the San Francisco 49ers. But, you know, that game last year against the Cincinnati Bengals, and then they ended up losing, um, you know, some games they shouldn't have lost to, like, the Colts. Yeah. They ended up losing um, to the Bills. Bills ended up getting revenge. I mean, Bills are a good team, but it's just, I don't know. I just, Patrick Mahomes just, I just feel like he, he gets too He gets too careless. cocky. You know what he reminds me of? He reminds me of Steph Curry. Because Steph true, Curry true, could yeah. hoop and he could go crazy. He's skilled. But in the playoffs, sometimes he gets a little full of himself. Right, and even right. in that series when they lost to the Cavs, he tried a couple of nonchalant behind exactly. the back, little, you know, zesty passes, you could say. And it cost his team big. And I think that's the same thing that Patrick Mahomes, mm -hmm. he tries to showboat, maybe force it or do exactly. a, a, a too much of a sidearm throw. And, He's no uh, look passes. But, but I mean, like I said, he ended up balling out against San Francisco 49ers. And it's true. actually in our pick'em, I actually would, said I wouldn't be surprised if the 49ers had won. 
because it looked like, you know, after he threw that pick, San Francisco ended up scoring, and that game was, you know, uh, I think it was what I don't know if it was tied or it was yeah, it was close, and it was then close. San Francisco just ended up just like dropping the ball. They they but, they couldn't get it done. But a number three quarterback from the uh, uh, the Dalton, New Orleans Saints, the Daltonator, no. yeah, Andy Dalton. 30 for 47 for a total of 361 yards, four touchdowns and three interceptions. Andy Dalton threw for back-to-back pick sixes with a loss, uh, 42 to 34 against the Arizona Cardinals. That to me is not a good team. And but he still got rated that high. I mean, a lot of his play was in garbage time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, he's a gunslinger. I mean, four touchdowns with three picks. And back-to-back pick sixes, like, jeez. I, w- I would be scared to throw after back-to-back pick sixes. Exactly. But if you're a true gunslinger, you just keep on throwing. And it's crazy because, you know, the New Orleans Saints were actually leading this game. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, Cardinals just caught fire. Yeah. But at number four quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, quarterback Trevor. from Jacksonville Jaguars, was 22 for... 43 for a total of 310 yards against my New York Giants. They ended up losing this game 23 to 17. Now in this game, it was really kind of a weird game because I mean, Trevor Lawrence, it's not weird because Trevor Lawrence played well, but it was just kind of, I don't know, it was just a weird game. Um, the yeah. Giants, how, do you, how do you feel about him overall as a quarterback? Because I was kind of iffy on him coming out of college. I think, I think he's going to be top 15 i think he's already top 15 but i think he could you know sneak into top 10 okay I mean, he's got doug peterson and we saw what he did with carson wentz yeah yeah also ended up winning at the super bowl with nick Foles. but you know trevor lawrence you know he's got christian kirk he's got travis etm um who's a good running back christian kirk you know they spent a lot of money in the offseason to get as a wide receiver but you know he's been putting in work and christian kirk's his guy he got marvin jones jr and like I said, I, I'm not going to lie, I was a little nervous against when they played my Giants, but also the refs did help them out a little bit. You know, with some questionable calls, I'm not going to lie. There's been questionable calls all years. I've been checking in on yeah, these Yeah, but that, that, games, was, that was man. very questionable. Yeah. You know, roughing was, the passer, and they just, I don't know, I, I think the refs tried to do whatever they could to try to get the Giants to lose this game. Giants didn't go down. And for our last quarterback of Week 7, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. Turn over now, mic. this is uh, this is actually my uh, co-host's favorite player. He has a poster of Garoppolo hanging on his wall, and uh, he me? lights a candle for him every night. Think about me? Yes. Hell no. Nah. Tripping. <laughs> <laughs> but Jimmy Garoppolo was 25 for 37 for a total of 303 yards, throwing for two touchdowns and one interception. What the loss was to the... Seven, I mean, to the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, uh, 44 to 23. Yeah. Now, Jimmy G is an interesting cat because Jimmy Garoppolo has got a lot of criticism. And the criticism that he gets is he can't win the big one. Now, yeah. he has, he was in the Super Bowl and he ended up losing to Patrick Mahomes in 2019 slash 2020. Uh, ended just... up bringing his team to the NFC Championship. Ended up losing to the Los Angeles Rams. But I mean, I think Jimmy Garoppolo just does just enough. He's just he's just an, he's like a barely positive player. It's like you know how they say you put this guy in there, he's not gonna hurt you, mm-hmm. he's not gonna mess up, but he might not make a spectacular play. I think that's pretty much Garoppolo's whole career. He's to me, he's always been more of like a little bit better than a game manager, yeah. where he can have the random like, oh, okay, that's a solid player. I didn't know he could make that throw, but he isn't he isn't your superstar quarterback. I mean, like, if you go to, like, some of his games, like, this year, like, one game in particular, like, when they played the uh, Denver Broncos, mm-hmm. that was a game that f- offensively was terrible on both sides. But he just, I mean, you can kind of maybe blame the receiver for running the wrong route, but, you know, he threw a costly pick that ended up icing the game for the Denver Broncos. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what, what's his... Uh... But then again, he has these games, like, on Monday Night Football against the Los Angeles Rams. You know, he lights him up, doesn't throw any picks, you know, throws at least like, what, two touchdowns? And, you know, and it's just, it's crazy because it's like, what Jimmy G are you going to get? But yeah. then again, at the same time, sometimes his defense lets him down too. But, um, where's Russell on the list? Russell Wilson's a bomb. <laughs> Bronco country. 
Next Let's we, ride. But next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to switch to our uh, move to our running backs. We're going to move on to rushing. So, number one, we're going to go with Kenneth Walker III, rookie out of uh, Michigan State, running back for the Seattle Seahawks. 23 carries for 167 yards and two touchdowns with a 74 yard touchdown. Wow. That's impressive. Now, let That's me, baller numbers. Let me tell you about Kenneth Walker. Now, Kenneth Walker was a guy who I personally wanted for my New York Giants as a backup because, you know, we didn't know how Saquon Barkley was going to be. You didn't know if he was going to be able yeah. to carry that load. We didn't know Saquon Barkley was going to be healthy. And a lot of people, you know, were kind of looking, you know, maybe it was time Might need to some start more. looking yeah. at his replacements just in case if Saquon gets hurt or just doesn't perform. Yeah. But, like I said, that didn't happen. And I ended up drafting this guy and ended up dropping him. And I'm just killing, like. You're killing me, Smalls. Yes, I'm so upset with myself because, you know, he was actually supposed to um, be the backup to Rashard Penny because he ended up having abdom abdominal. He had a hernia, sports hernia. Ooh, those are rough. The yeah, at the beginning of the year. And then, you know, he ended up coming back. But Penny was still the guy. And then Penny ended up getting a season in the ending injury and now kenneth walker is balling i believe he has like what three straight 100 yard games yeah so this guy is definitely um could be a pro bowl running back man they, they should have wilson should have stayed right i mean it, it, with his arm diminishing as it is he needs a guy that can run the ball like that next running back we're going to go out of the las vegas raiders josh jacobs 20 carries for 143 yards three touchdowns longest touchdown was 15 yards you know josh jacobs is good but he ain't no brandon jacobs no he's not no brandon jacobs but finally this is his fourth year um well it's gonna be his fourth slash going into fifth year okay and uh you know josh jacobs you know was kind of you know not wasn't really doing too much like he was you know kind of He's really been kind of inconsistent, but finally this is his breakout year. Yeah. And I believe he is number three uh, in rushing uh, behind Saquon Barkley. For the year? Yeah. Nice. Next, King Henry. 30 carries for 128 yards. Little Derek. No touchdowns. Longest run of the day was 23 yards. Now, Derek Henry. I just like watching him stiff arm people yes. into the crowd. Derek Henry is finally... Like I said, I know at the beginning of the year he was, you know, kind of was kind of quiet because we didn't really know what he was going to be this year because he didn't have no AJ Brown. Mm -hmm. He ended up getting traded to the Philadelphia Eagles, and they ended up trading for it. Robert Woods, who, you know, was coming off a, uh, I believe a ACL injury. Yeah. And then they drafted uh, um, Kenneth. Uh, I forgot the name, but they drafted this guy out of Arkansas. Can't think of his name right now. Trayvon Burke, I think. But yeah, I'm but, not in, sure. but anyways, Derrick Henry is finally carrying that team. Um, the Titans are finally catching fire. Ended up, ended, it, even though they ended up losing to my New York Giants Week One, but you know, I, I expect the Tennessee Titans to possibly make the wild card. You think they're gonna put it together and uh, get that wild card? I think they can get the wild card. Yeah. Okay. But I think that they need to trade for a wide receiver as well. Yeah. Because I think Derrick Henry plays even better when he has that receiver that can stretch the field. But even though if you stack the box, Derrick Henry is just so big, man. He's just so big. <laughs> so good. But, yeah, Derrick Henry is a beast. You wouldn't want to make him angry. He definitely, definitely looks like he would Hulk smash you. Yeah. But uh, who we got bringing up? Number three? No, we got number Derrick, four. Number four. We're going to go with Devontae Foreman. Running back out of Carolina Panthers. 15 carries for 118 yards. The longest run of the day was 60 yards. Now, Foreman was backing up Derrick Henry last year and ended up leaving to the Carolina Panthers. That's in a clear rebuild. Uh, he was actually the third string running back on the depth chart. But wow. after they traded CMC, um, Stephen Wilkes said that there's going to be a running back committee between him and Chuba Herbert. So he ended up having the better day out of the two. Um, for those who play fantasy, especially since uh, Chuba Herbert is out, yeah. 
Go pick this guy up right now. He's he going to kill it for you. Possibly be a league winner for you. I know I ended up snagging him off the waiver wire on Wednesday. Nice. Waiver wire Wednesday. So he's actually in my starting lineup. So I would recommend for those who need a running back or, you know, just need some extra depth, definitely go and pick this guy up. You know, you seem to have – that happens a lot, especially in college and in pro. But, like, you see that in college where mm -hmm. some guy's a big-name running back and then uh, his backup goes, like, you know – in the later rounds as a pros exactly. and he ends up having a better career than the the guy that started over him because the guy that started got ran down in college so he was his body already took enough beating where this guy's fresh so and it also has to do with his running style too like yep. is he a type of running back that can run you know can you take the those tackles. hits yeah also it's about you know scheme like does you know the scheme fit the player yeah as, as well all right so that's it for rushing next we're gonna go oh Last one, bye bye guys. Try to you try to not give this Number man the five, shine. Last one, we're gonna go Travis ETM, running back, rookie from the Jacksonville Jaguars, had 15 carries, 114 yards, and one touchdown. Should have been two touchdowns, but shout out to I believe Julian Love out of my New York Giants ended up uh, stripping the ball from him. That not was today. actually a touchback that he would have had two touchdowns of the day, uh, but we ended up stopping him. So. That being said. Oh, and then uh, just a quick little shout out. Our boy Saquon barely missed the cut. Yeah. Got there at number six, and he had 110 uh, total yards. So 110 shout out Saquon. Yards. Yeah, Saquon Barkley, that's second in rushing right now. Are you ready to go to receiving? Now, but back to Travis ETM just real quick. Okay. Yeah. So Travis ETM, the thing about him was uh, he was actually, this is actually his second year. So last year he ended up tearing his ACL. Terrible. And, uh, and uh, spring training or preseason yeah preseason so he was actually out rehabbing and at the beginning of the season james robinson that just got traded to the uh, new york jets was actually looking like james robinson of 2020 mm. season but james robinson snaps ended up going down travis etm clearly looks like to be the guy so like i said guys if you're gonna trade travis etm Make sure you trade for top player at that position. But that's it for rushing. Next, we're going to go to receiving. All right. We got a number one. So the first player we're going to go over today for the receiving is Tyler Boyd, wide receiver out of the Cincinnati Bengals. Eight reception, 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 sorry, eight reception for 155 yards and one touchdown. Now, if you have Tyler Boyd in your fantasy league and you started him, you probably won your league. But if you had Tyler Boyd and you had him on your bench or you went against him, you probably lost. And I was that guy. I had him on my bench. I started Michael Gallup in front of him because Dak was coming back. They were home against the Detroit Lions. That's not very good, but I ended up. You losing, mispicked on that yeah, one. Yeah, I ended up losing my matchup because I sat Tyler Boyd. So, especially since uh, Jamar Chase, the next player we're going to go over, is actually out four to six weeks. Yeah, I heard that. Start him. Even when Jamar Chase comes back. Still start he's him. fully healthy. Yes, start him because he's in a passing offense. Tyler Boyd, to me, is, is considered a number three receiver, but if you put him on any team, possibly he could be a number one. A low-end number one receiver. Yeah. Worst. Because Tyler Boyd, to me, is, you know, the dude can run routes. He's a deep ball receiver. He's really good. And he clearly appears to be Joe Burrow's favorite well, target. Well, one of his favorite targets. Well, and look at this. The one We can kind of group them because, you know, you could see one and two, um, you know, that they that they uh, killed it and they're both teammates and then three and four they both killed it and they're both teammates exactly so you know as you could see it's a couple high high powered offenses there exactly and uh, we got juju smith bringing in number three did you have any other words on chase since he got injured oh jamar chase yeah eight, eight catches 130 yards two touchdowns uh he does appear to be out for four to six weeks for a hip injury um, so for you fantasy owners that have him, do you drop him? Um, Would you stash him? Don't do drop him, but hope you picked up someone off the waiver wire. Now I don't know if you're gonna have anyone on your team that you're gonna pick off the waiver wire that's gonna be putting up Jamar Chase numbers. But like I said, you know maybe you might get lucky. Uh, but Jamar Chase appears to be out now. Jamar Chase to me is a top five receiver 
Um, I mean, the dude's just a freak of nature. Yeah. And he's only going to get better. I, um, I hate that he had a knee injury. Knee injuries are tough. I had one when yeah, I hip played. Injury. Oh, a hip injury? Yeah, hip. Oh, sorry. Hip, hip. Any any lower uh, extremity uh, is is uh, bad. But I had a knee injury whenever I played football, and that that is no joke. It's no joke. But uh, Juju Smith uh, Schuster, it looks like he had a good game. Um, I actually thought that he was going to be a lot better this year, but looks like he's finally picking it up. Yeah, but I mean, also, I mean, like I said, dude had seven catches for 124 yards. Uh, one touchdown. Now, Juju Smith-Suster, I mean, like I said, uh, he hasn't really been as consistent as he was, you know, with Pittsburgh. But like I said, you know, this is his breakout game. Now, let's hope to see if he can do this uh, more consistently. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand the Chiefs just picked up Kadarius uh, Tooney uh, from my New York Giants. Um, that you know could definitely open up some more opportunities for Juju. Yeah. But I feel like you know if the Chiefs, you know, really want to go really far in the playoffs, they gotta they, they gotta they get him involved. Need, they need more games like this from Juju. Yeah, I think you know. Especially he's playing for you know a contract because he's on. I mean, he got he, he signed a one year deal with them, pretty cheap. So if he wants to you know get that extension, he's gonna have the ball out. Yeah, because he had a down year with the Steelers. Mm -hmm. And then him coming here was kind of like you gotta you gotta prove yourself exactly type of deal. So it looks like he's uh, building up a, a, a little bit of stats here, and let's see if he could keep it going. But it looked like his teammate also had an impressive. Yes, game. number th number four, mm -hmm. MVS Marcus Marquise Valdez Scantley, three receptions for 111 yards, uh, and a win against the San Francisco 49ers. Yep. Now, MVS was a, a free agent uh, signing that the Kansas City Chiefs got from Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers probably really misses this guy. Aaron but, Rodgers yeah. is just taking whatever he can to get through the pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but MVS, I mean, like I said, he was never a number one receiver. He was kind yep. of always overshadowed by, you know, uh, Devontae Adams and uh, Lazard as well. Now, he did have some games where he had balled out. Um, but, you know, like I said about Juju, you know, if, the Chiefs really want to go far in the playoffs. They're going to have to have, you know, games from these guys more consistently, um, especially if they want to beat the Bills. Yeah, that's because, gonna that's going to be their big target this exactly, year. Exactly, because the Chiefs, you know, like I said, they don't really have a consistent run game. Yeah. But they can throw the ball, but they're going to have to have these guys going to have to step up on a the, daily basis. The Chiefs remind me of a 7-on-7 seven seven team. Yeah. But uh, who, who we got uh, bringing up the number five Number spot. five, lastly, is uh, Chris Olave, uh, rookie out of Ohio State for the New Orleans Saints with seven receptions for 106 yards. Now, Chris Olave appears to be the number one guy and possibly the future of the franchise. Um, I understand there's no Mike Thomas, uh, no Jarvis Landry, who they went and got uh, from free agency. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Michael Thomas, there's been rumors that he might be moved uh, November 1st, which is the trade deadline. Now, he has been battling with hamstring injuries, and that's why Chris Olave appears to be the number one guy. Now, when he comes back, uh, Chris Olave, to me, is still going to be getting a lot of uh, targets because he's that guy that can, you know, not only a deep threat, but he can just pretty much do it all. Yeah. And... Um, you know the Saints definitely got a got a playmaker, and I only and I only expect Chris Olave to get even better and better each and every week and year as well. Especially okay, if they Hopkins get got six. especially if they get a quarterback. Oh yeah, and we didn't really go over tight ends, but like I said, Travis Kelsey six receptions for 98 yards. Yeah, he's number seven. Tied uh, with George Kittle as well. That had six receptions for 98 yards, and then followed by. Uh, David Njoku that had seven catches for 78 yards as well. Now yeah. David Njoku is a, to me is having his best season. Uh, tight end out of the um, Cincinnati. No, no, Cincinnati, my bad. Cleveland Browns. Now David Njoku. Um, I know some people were you know saying that you know this is gonna be his breakout year. For those who said that, I mean, come on, you got lucky. <laughs> because for one, Deshaun Watson is not the quarterback, and it's Jacoby Brissett. And Jacoby Brissett has never really liked tight ends. No. And I've never really seen a tight end ball, you know, with Jacoby Brissett. Um, you know, his time in New England, his time in uh, Miami, his time in 
um, Indianapolis. But like I said, David Njoku is playing well. The dude has a lot of talent. Um, but let's see if he can do this next year as well. Yeah, and it looks like, you know, we went through everything here with y'all. We checked out the passing, the rushing, the receiving. And, uh, you know, defense, sorry, defense, you get no love today. Yeah, we really, yeah we're not gonna, we're not going to go down there. But anyways, guys, uh, we, uh, we try to upload every week, uh, especially with the T, uh, Tales T from the Crib Sports Edition as well. But yeah, yeah we, we try to break it down every week. We're going to go through the stats. We're going to go through our Sunday picks. So check it out. And uh, this is Tales from the Crib Sports Edition. All the links will be in the description. It's your boy Chico Grande, a.k.a. Shooter McGavin. And I got with me. Real good underscore Doty. Make sure to follow and subscribe on my YouTube channel and also on Instagram. And just drop a comment. Uh, like, comment do it all that helps the channel grow uh anything you got to say you know if you agree with some of our comments if you disagree with what we said put it all below everything helps the channel and uh, we're also going to do our uh our picks our sunday picks so stay tuned for that that'll be uh coming in our next video as well we out all right we'll see y'all later